enterprise, primarily handling customer service and sales to DRI's installed base. Um, and just okay. about everybody else on the call is either a functional consultant or part of our technical team um, on the services delivery side. Okay. Thank you, John. Perfect. And uh, on all, our side also, we've got Heather. George, Heather is our... Uh, uh, I don't want to say Swiss Army knife, but she she does a, a lot of uh, things on just coordinating things. If we wanted to get demos set up, um, you know, and any of the uh, logistical type of things, and uh, I wanted her on the call as well. So. Hello, good morning and afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So why don't we proceed, uh, Tim? Yeah. All right. So. So basically, um, you know, most of you kind of know how the uh, the site line uh, shipping has been. I'll just kind of go through it quickly. Is you know, site line. We've got our uh, you know our shipping, whether we're using pick, pack, and ship or cu customer orders uh, over here. You ship your parts. Uh, out of site line does your inventory transaction, your cost of goods. Uh, transactions and then now you actually start to do the physical shipping. Uh, most customers have some uh, shipping tools there in the warehouse. They've got, you know, either a World Ship uh, terminal or a, you know, FedEx, wh whatever that is. There's scales, printers hooked up to that, but they're really two separate applications. So you do your shipment, you print your labels, you do your carrier stuff. And then you've got you've got your information in two different places. Um, you've got all your uh, your tracking numbers, all that sort of stuff. How does the address get over there? And usually, what that means is, you know, with Worldship, we've got you go in with an ODBC connection, and uh, I think in eight o something they started putting in some uh, SQL views that actually made it a little bit easier to you know to map some of your address stuff on the on the world ship side but you still have this you know this double process um and this disconnect here and you know whether or not it's odbc or, or you know you're doing it manually that uh that ability to have um updated information there there are two different transactions you've got to do that in two different places um you know, there's timing issue, and, and whenever you're doing something manually, uh, it exposes you to mistakes. So, in a nutshell, what I'm going to show you here, what what we have done, and um, I, I know some of you guys personally, not uh, AIT, we've been working with the product since 1993. We've been in various forms of a partnership with. Uh, you know, MMS systems, Simon, Simex, uh, all the way back, and we um, we became an Infor partner in 2012, and uh, we've been, you know, we've been doing a lot of these world ship type of things, and it's a custom custom deal every time. So we we looked at you know doing something about that. Um, we had I think some of you guys are familiar with was it Insight Ship. And, yep. uh, you know, Insight Ship was actually uh, pretty good and until their relationship was uh, uh, severed. And and obviously there's PaceJet out there. PaceJet's a little bit, you know, it does some of this. It's a little different, um, actually a lot different. Um, and, and that is two different systems as well. And what we wanted to do here was to actually have one single point where we're doing these transactions We've got a console and sight line. I do the shipping transactions, the cost of goods, the inventory. Um, I'm, you know, hooked up to my printers and my scales right away. And, you know, at that point, I can do everything that I need to do, including, you know, printing all my labels and having that communication with, uh, with the carriers directly, you know, when I'm actually doing the transactions. Uh, right, right now um, we have UPS, FedEx, and USPS. We are going to continually um, start to roll out different LTL. Uh, we're doing um, UPS freight by the end of the month. And 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 by the way, um, just kind of where we're at on this, 
our, you know, we've got this live um, right now and working. We have a um, kind of a GA, if you will, at the that we planned on the end of this month. Um, the sightline symposium was was there and a good opportunity to uh, to show that. Um, I probably would have waited a month on that because we're we're still kind of just tightening all the screws on that. We do have a completely working shippable solution, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, shore it up a little bit. So really kind of by the end of this month, we'd have more of an install pack. And, you know, the, the upside here, uh, single interface, you're, you know, you're in here doing one thing, one time. Uh, it is 100%, you know, Mongoose platform. Um, the way it's designed, is not really getting too much all up in the face of standard sight line. I'm using some of the tables there, uh, but it's not, you know, there, there's no uh, stored procedure changes, um, nothing that's really going to, you know, modify, if you will, the sight line application. So it can be dropped in. Um, and whether or not you've got this on premise or, um, you know, a, now, when I say in the cloud, I'm not talking about the uh, the multi-tenant, um, you know, cloud suite, industrial cloud. Uh, I'm talking about just, you know, whether you're hosting it at Aptrix Cloud or Azure Server or AWS. Um, and whether you've got a smart, you know, click once client or browser, uh, the only thing there, uh, you need the click once to actually talk to uh, some of the hardware, like the scale itself. It can be configured with uh, multiple uh, multiple companies' locations. So uh, the customer that we're working with right now, they're out in North Carolina. They actually have three different um, three different companies in in you know they're on a cul-de-sac in one street, but there's three different buildings, three different companies. They have three different uh, UPS accounts with them, um, so we can we can handle that. We can do mu multiple customer carrier accounts. So right now, Standard Sightline has a, uh, you know, a place for a customer carrier account, but a lot of customers are thinking, well, go ahead and use my, uh, use my UPS account for this, or, you know, use my FedEx account for that. Uh, obviously, the real-time component, we can do uh, freight billing and chargeback rules um, in terms of, all right, let's bill them uh, let's build and publish rates and we'll, you know, we'll pay our negotiator rate or for this, um, you know, for this set of rules or this set of conditions, we want to charge 5% or $5. Uh, we can do rate shopping. It will support dimensional pricing. And uh, because we're tracking all that, we actually get more visibility of, you know, what am I actually spending in freight? And what am I actually able to recap and, uh, and charge back? So, okay, um, you guys, I'm going to mute you guys. I got some Darth Vader thing going on here that's on somebody's uh, phone. I'm not sure how you auto mute everybody. There we go. Um, I think you can manually unmute yourself. If you guys have a question, go ahead and, uh, you know, unmute yourself and, and ask. So let's uh, let's get into... The console here. So, what we've got, I, I'm just going to go straight into the uh, the console itself and uh, do a couple of shipping transactions. I can choose, like I said, you can either use the pick, pack, and ship module, or uh, choose from custom orders. So if I Say I want to choose from a customer order. It will take me over here. I can choose whatever order that I want to ship. That's going to come back and bring me uh, one that I already shipped. Okay, that will bring me back. Um, it, this is very similar to uh, the functionality of the standard sightline shipping screen. I can uh, select individuals. I can change my quantities. I can you know, choose lot numbers. Uh, on that, 
surreal tracking is um, going to, I, I don't have that solid right uh, right now. We'll probably have that. Uh, we're hoping to, by the end of the month, to have the serial tracking uh, work as well. So basically, I can just select all, and I'll create the shipment. Go there. So now I have the, uh, here are the parts that I want to ship. And obviously, I want to put them somewhere. So I'm going to choose a package uh, or a box, something. I will take that box. Now I can take this. I'm just going to copy this. Let's pretend I had a scanner here. Um, I can just scan that part. And what it's going to do is it's going to scan one of those parts into the box. Now, it's scanning one of the parts because I've got this in what I'm calling supermarket scan mode. If I wanted to just scan that part and then say, well, what, what is the quantity that I want to, uh, to pack in that box, I can put a quantity in there. So I've got the option between you know, supermarket scanning or not. Uh, the other thing that I can do if I want is I can just take these and I can drag them over if I want. Or I can just add all the items to uh, to a box as well. So I've got a lot of items or a lot of uh, options how I want to pack these boxes. Let's say I don't have enough room for that on that box. I can go ahead and add another package here. And go down and then finish packing that box. So now I have everything ready to go. And at this, at this point, uh, I can go ahead and print my shipping labels. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm going UPS ground. So I print the shipping label now. This will actually print the validated uh, or what is it, certified labels for, uh, for the carriers. And it will update the tracking number as well. That's instantly communicated to customer service, obviously, on the, on the customer order. Um, at this point, I can go ahead and ship those orders. Now, what I've done right now, all I've done is the, uh, the box shipment here. Now, if I hit this, go ahead and this is actually going to do the shipment transactions out of Sightline. The inventory gets relieved, cost of goods gets updated, and this, uh, this shipment gets changed to shipped. So, Tim, this is connecting in real time to the UPS uh, web services to, to kind of retrieve the data, get tracking numbers, and communicate shipment status. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. So that's unlike, you know, the ODBC database level integration and some of the other things that we've had available to our customer base. Yeah, so the ODBC, basically what you're doing there, um, at least with um, – with UPS, the ODBC is talking to WorldShip. WorldShip is actually making those uh, communication connections to the um, to the carrier or to UPS. And if I go up here and take a take a quick look here, we've got our uh, configurations here. So if I go into my UPS configuration, here's where I'm actually setting up my uh, UPS account number. You get your credentials. Here's the uh, the web service URL that it's going to. So it's it's communicating to the carrier in real time. So if I, assuming I have UPS accounts and all that stuff, I just contact my rep and then this is made available to me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they you get your credentials uh, from them. Um, you set it up in here and... Um, there, there is the ability to, I believe, with all the carriers do, you know, kind of set up a little sandbox environment as yep. well for testing. Good. Um, the, the other thing, um, you know, I said multiple accounts. So this is just one configuration. If I had 
a couple different shipping companies or um, you know even multi-site, I could have multiple um, UPS accounts here with credentials or uh, USPS. Actually, one thing about USPS here is uh, you you don't actually deal directly with the United States Postal Service. There are brokers in uh, in the middle. Uh, in, uh, Indicia is one of them. Stamps.com is another. And uh, there's a third one that we've been working with and we're almost finalized. It's a uh, company called Par Parcel Partners out of Salt Lake City. And they, they actually have a, uh, a relationship with um, with USPS where uh, we can use their account and there's actually discounted rates that are cheaper than you could get with uh, stamps or indicia. Okay, good, thank you. Please continue. Okay. So let's say I'm gonna go and I am using pick, pack and ship. Um, here's a pick list that I created. Just, um, one quick question. Are you guys using much, if any, of pick, back, and ship with your customers at this point? Uh, begrudgingly, but we are. Certainly. Yeah, it's fairly, it's it's becoming more common with each implementation, frankly. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean. Six for me. Six? I said it's about 50-50 for me, half 50, do and half don't. 50-50, okay. Okay, well, if, if we're doing pick, pack, and ship, um, and you're familiar with it, you probably notice some similarities here, a little bit of the, the final, um, was it the pack confirmation? And and frankly, you know, you're, you're putting things in boxes and um, sending that out. So there is, you know, it looks, it looks very similar. This actually really allows you to circumvent that pack confirmation if you're doing pick, pack, and ship. Uh, if we go here, um, obviously pick, pack, ship, I can have multiple customer orders uh, on a shipment there. Go ahead and create that. And go up here. If I want to, um, of course it is, hold on. Bad package type. Add all my items. If w when I'm in here um, and I'm I'm loading items, if you if you noticed, I did this. I've got some weight that updated on here. Um, if I can remove an item, it's going to update my weight. But the other thing that I can do here is to is I I can override that. I've got a scale out there. Uh, I got this box. I just hit get weight. Um, this will error on me because I'm on RDP and I don't have a scale. But that'll actually uh, do the weight for me there. Um, once I actually go out here and let's say I've got something and I print a uh, shipping label or do the shipping transaction, I can void that uh, shipping transaction as well. And I can void that at any point. Um, I can also, you know, if I did the shipping, I can void it. I can remove all the packages. So, if, you know, I, I do this box. They call it last minute. Um, and, you know, what? we're too late. We got to move it to something else. I can void that. I can change my, uh, I can change my ship to here, my ship via, and, uh, and redo that as well. So there's a lot of options. The one thing is once I've actually shipped this, though, um, to unship the custom order, you would go through the uh, custom order shipping screen to do that. It was just with, you know, with the fact that you could have multiple orders and all that, it was just too hairy to want to try and do. A uh, couple of things. You mean the order shipping, you'd reverse it or use the unship that's part of TPS? Yeah. So, well, yeah, you could do the unship on on the pickback ship. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Just just not through this. Uh, in terms of uh, if I had, um, 
the the need to print the pricing on that. Um, you know, it's pro forma invoice, so that'll actually print that packing list with um, with my. Let's see if I have a. Uh, So this is this is what our uh, output looks like here. We could do it with pricing for the pro forma invoice. Uh, I want to go over to customer orders here quickly. And let's take a quick look at an order I think I shipped. So if we go over here uh, and we want to look at our uh, shipping, like our tracking, there's our tracking. Um, I go ahead and track that. I think this is a fictitious. Uh, this is a test environment uh, tracking number, so I don't think I'll get a good result here, but this this will actually go out to the carrier call and it will give you all, all that tracking information. That's a little browser window you've got on the right. Uh, it is actually a, uh, technically, I don't know what to call it, same object as like a text box notes. So it's actually, did you mean browser like, Firefox browser or? Well, just within Mongoose, you can create a browser type object that will present, you know, web information. I was just wondering if that's what that was. It's not, it's not critical. Okay. I'll ask, I'll ask John. I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, one of the things that we have here, though, is the ability to, uh, to do some rate shopping as well. So if I've got my, say my carrier now, my weight here, my calculated weight is going to be based on what you've got in the item master. Um, your dimensions here, um, we're, we're not quite done with that right now because of, uh, in fact, I'm not sure when we'll totally have that. If I've got, you know, 10 line items on the box, I have all those dimensions potentially on the items itself, but in terms of like, you know, fitting it to a package and things like that, um, I'm not sure when we'll be able to really do that. But if you did know your packaging, you could put it in here uh, because it will look at the dimensional pricing and I can go ahead and go out there and find out, you know, here, here are the rates that I would get if I shipped this thing. Uh, if I change that to uh, USPS, end of the month, this is actually going to be a, uh, this will be a three-part tab here that shows you all all carriers at once. So I could compare, um, I think 41 pounds is too much for the post office. Nope, it's not. So we'll actually be showing side-by-side -side comparison of all the carriers here when we do this. Uh, in terms of the uh, shipping, we've got freight rules that I had talked about that are up there. And if I go to my freight rules, we have, you know, there's starting and expiration date. So if I wanted to have free freight for a certain amount of time, uh, we can do customer numbers. Uh, wild cards for customer number, uh, if we wanted to, customer sequence, customer type, uh, and then, you know, what's the freight basis that we're going to do, the negotiated uh, rate, our cost, and what our markup is. The... Where's my customer? Oh, that's right there. So uh, I had mentioned that customers can have more than one, uh, more than one shipping account. So we've got another table instead of modifying the ship to because the the standard ship to does have you know, their, their account number. Instead of modifying that, we've got um, the ability to add multiple 
uh, multiple accounts for any given customer, any sequence. We could make this the default for all ship twos, uh, things like that. And then in terms of um, you know the freight rules as well, I don't know if any of you are familiar. There, are, there is uh, was it freight charge method in Sightline um, that for the life of me, I, I still haven't figured out exactly where it is or what it does. But because I, di I didn't want to completely walk all over what uh, what Sightline is, we've actually got on our setup our configuration here. Um, this this is where I would have if it was multi-site, for instance, a multi-site. Uh, or multiple uh, multiple configurations. What's the UPS account I'm using? The FedEx account, and then down here, in terms of the um, the rules of the customer carrier account. So I've got multiple uh, carrier accounts possible. I could say go ahead and use that, or use standard Sightline, or use ours if it's not present. Then use standard Sightline. And same thing with the uh, the freight charge methods. If you wanted to use the standard sightline freight charge methods, you could do that, or it can default to ours. Uh, in terms of uh, you know some more setup stuff, we've got uh, the scale configuration. Um, this requires for the scales to work. This requires a um, uh, a small footprint install of some files on the local uh, shipping client. It's going to allow the communication here, uh, whether it's a USB scale or a comm scale. And we've we've actually, uh, happily enough, been able to uh, communicate with some really crusty old hardware, which is tends to be the norm in a warehouse. Um, and then in terms of the you know the printers for uh, printing the labels. We just set those up. Those are actually going to look at the um, uh, the sight line. Uh, that's not here. This this is this should be drop down box for our sight line printers. So once that's uh, once that's set up and configured, one other thing we've got here back to uh, postage uh, monitoring with USPS. Whether you're, um, you know, Indicia or Stamps.com, you actually buy postage in advance from them, uh, and then you have that in an account. So this actually monitors your account for postage, and you can you can send email warnings when you're getting, you know, low, and you've got to re-up your postage as well. And that, that is largely the overview um, in terms of kind of roadmap on this. A actually, before I go into that, are there any questions or you want to take a second to discuss some of this? This is Michael. A couple things. Um, as you probably know, certainly at DRI, we've experienced over the last few years more customers that are you know, not traditional industrial manufacturers only that have a distribution component to their business or have higher volumes. What's your expectation or experience so far with, with uh, you know, kind of daily shipping volumes with SureShip? If somebody's shipping three or 400 packages a day, are they likely to run into, uh, you know, bottlenecks or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, good question. So, um, so we actually had this thing on our uh, kind of our, our planned products for, for a long time. And then a perfect customer came along that we could uh, work with on that. And these guys that I had mentioned in North Carolina, they're doing, um, they're doing about, I think right now, 100 to 150 shipments a day. Uh, with that, and I mean the 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 performance on this in terms of the API calls, all that sort of stuff is um, is really fast. You basically you hit this, and that thing starts printing. Everything's updated. Um, we're waiting. They have a uh, 
a busy season that's coming up and we're waiting for that, but we anticipate probably about 300 shipments a day with these guys. Um, and I, I'm not seeing any issues there. Okay. Um, I guess just following up on that a little bit uh, at, at the symposium thing, I mentioned that we've got a, an EDI partnership and a practice we've developed a bunch of standard integration, those kind of things. The labeling is, is a, an issue if somebody requires UCC 128 labels or customer specific labels, how, okay, how would you handle labeling requirements in an environment like that? Yeah. Um, one of the thing for, by the way, one of the things that is on the roadmap here is, um, you know, higher level containers. So I've got a package, uh, but we're going to put pallet level, um, pallet level functionality in here. And with that would be uh, pallet labels, uh, package labels. Uh, I don't have those developed yet. That is probably in the next 60, what did I say, end of the month, probably end of November to have some labeling. And I'm not, because, I mean, I've been doing shipping labels or, you know, the EDI labels for a long time. Like there, there are no, duplicates every one of them's a little bit different mm -hmm. so what my plan would be here is using i think you're probably using bartender maybe or it varies sometimes bartender sometimes uh ssrs labels you know just whatever somebody has expertise with frankly okay um, so what uh, the labels that we've been doing for customers that are aside from aside from this, uh, we've been doing kind of a amalgam. So we're in sight line. We're basically dropping out to a file to um, uh, to bartender. We've done some SSRS stuff, but I th I would imagine what we're going to do here is really just focus on kind of a data set that comes out that's a configurable data set of what you actually want to have in the label and then design them in bartender. Okay. Well, we can take that deeper at some point in the future then. Yeah. But labels, labels are a big part of where we're going to focus or, or not just labels, but uh, documentation as well, because I'm, I know, you know, this, packing slip we printed you know that's fine to stick on the outside of a box but in terms of you know requirements for uh for other customers there's going to be specific requirements for uh documentation that we're going to have to address as well any other questions dri team i guess you can move on tim all right Uh, so right now, this is uh, what I just showed you is a 901. Uh, we're going to uh, port this to all versions of 901. And at the symposium, I, I said, you know, possibly it'll be 803. I've had a lot of people come up to me um, and say, you should really do this for 80311. So that's, uh, that's gone from a possible to a most likely that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, like I said, we're going to be adding LTL carriers. Um, this this is also going to be one of these uh, opportunistic things as we get into um, new opportunities. You know, these guys use, uh, you know, Conway or, or whatever it is that we're going to add those on uh, as they uh, present, present themselves. On track and DHL will be something that we actually um, do no matter what. Uh, the paperwork and labels that I had talked about will be part of it. And um, the the other thing that's not on here in terms of international, we, we actually can do the shipping internationally with some of those carriers right now. What's missing is some of the uh, information about the HTC or is HTS? 
the you know the uh, commodity codes and some of the customs documentation. I'm just trying to work out where we actually uh, where we grab that, how we present that. Um, some of the carriers want a condensed list at the end of it of all the different product commodity codes um, versus you know printing it next to each item on the packing slip. So that's something that we're working on. And that that is it. All right. Well, one of the things I'll you know we don't have to do in this conversation between you and Randy. I'd like to uh, talk about pricing and how that kind of works. And so you can just touch generally speaking. Now, is it a site license? Is how how was the price for the product arrived at? And uh, so we can be aware of that we can take a detailed conversation off. Yeah, so it, it yeah. would be a – go ahead, Randy. Well, I was just going to say there, it's a base price plus uh, a per shipping station. So okay. if you've got two or three shipping stations, similar to maybe devices that you use uh, out in the production warehouse, um, So and then 20% maintenance. Uh, and then we would also uh, be happy to discuss uh, uh, discounting. Um, you know, we want to, we want to kind of be able to match or, or at least, uh, provide a discounting structure. And then also, uh, obviously there's a, a commission structure in place for, for you all. So, okay. Well, we can talk in more detail about those elements. Um, sounds like you've got one kind of customer in production today is, did I get that right? Correct. Okay, so it's it's kind of what is your you have other projects underway? I mean, just kind of where are we in terms of getting more field cycles on it? Uh, we we've got a couple of customers that we are going to. Uh, they're actually new logo sales coming on board. Hopefully, Randy this month. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully. So th those will be uh, part of that. Again, I I actually. Uh, in terms of, you know, bundling this up and getting a good install and getting everything tied up, um, wanted to GA this thing at the end of this month. Uh, if there were Got any, it. if there were any other opportunities that, um, that were out there, I mean, it, it works, it's functional. It's, you know, uh, a lot of the little hiccups we found this, this company that we've been working with has, uh, been doing it since August 1st. Um, and I mean, we, we don't hear from them very much cause it's, you know, it's working out. So, uh, well, and they're giving, they're giving glowing testimonials, um, and re repurposing, um, some of their shipping people because they're a growing organization. They're, they're not getting rid of them, but repurposing them to, uh, you know, some things that's more productive than just shipping, uh, based on this product being there. So. Are there any um, third-party costs? Clearly, if I've, I've got a, if I'm going to use Bartender, I have to license Bartender. Are there any other costs associated with this? If assuming I have those things in place, no. The I mean, I, 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 the only thing you know, you have to buy postage up front from USPS, uh, um, but that's what you would expect. Okay, and we should have that partnership uh, rolled out by the end of the month as well. In terms of, I forget what the discount was, but it's it's not insignificant savings, and it kind of uh, it, it almost doesn't matter who you buy it from, but it, it it's a pretty compelling discount structure from what it seemed like to me. And that that's USPS only. Got it. Oh, actually, if you are doing more than – if you have customers that are doing more than half a million dollars a year spend total freight, uh, then this these guys, this uh, company we're working with, actually has um, – you have the opportunity to get involved with their uh, UPS and FedEx accounts as well. Um, and it was I, – I forget what the numbers were, but it was – uh, it was definitely worthwhile. So if you've got anybody doing a lot of volume, they can um, kind of get into this 
well, I don't know, co-op or pool on this thing and, and save some more shipping money. Good. That's all I've got. John Haddix, anybody else? No, I think we answered uh, some of the initial questions I had were, you know, around um, really the roadmap here, you know, paperwork wise and international documentation certifications, those type of things that uh, often pop up. And then, you know, I'd be interested in pricing as we hear more about that, Michael, please um, keep me in the loop. Yep. Absolutely. So, you know, thank you. I appreciate AIT's time uh, showing this to us. We, uh, We'll be interested as it continues to grow, and and certainly if we identify opportunities, we'll be you know talking to you guys about that as well, um, because I think it's a necessary product. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. All the best. Bye bye. All right. Thanks bye. all. Bye. All right. Yep. Bye bye.